Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here, or you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, please do so, along with turning on the notification bell, so you're alerted when I actually drop a video or go live. And uh, right now it's a busy season, so sometimes I can't drop it exactly when I want to. Like last night, I got an opportunity to go see the Lakers and the Warriors. It was free tickets, ninth row. I had never seen LeBron and Steph play live. So I had to do it, uh, and it was it was a lot of fun. And man, was I happy because <laughs> while there, I got the news of the Knicks winning. And uh, man, this is a great situation that the Knicks are in right now. Uh, I actually did a video a while back. Uh, I think there were like seven games left uh, in the season, and I looked at like what the best case scenarios right now. The Knicks are right in line to be able to get that third seed. They actually have the sole possession of third seed. I got highlights for you guys. Uh, we're going to get this thing going. Let's go. Here we go. The New York Knicks uh, went back to Chicago after going up to Milwaukee and taking care of business there. They went down to Chicago and took care of business. They got revenge on the Bulls, who they had lost to in, on Friday. Here they won this game 128-117. Uh, you know, the final score, yeah, it's 11 points, uh, but the game was a little bit closer than uh, that score gives you. Uh, the, the, it was actually a four-point game at the beginning of the fourth quarter. So the Knicks had to, like, you know, hustle. And this guy, this guy was unbelievable. He shot 55.6% overall. He shot 66.7% from the three-point line. He hit four of six three-point line. Obviously, he was a plus 12, 24 points for Mr. OG Ananobi. However, he was not the star. And how could it be when there's a Jalen Brunson on the team or anyone else could be a star? Look at this, 45 points, eight assists, unbelievable even when other players have great games this guy just does i mean legendary type stuff another 40 plus point outburst for mr jalen brunson he is hands down i think he should be a first team all nba player uh he should definitely be in the top five of mvp voting uh you know if you have an ability to vote and you're not voting for him then you're really not doing your job because you're not looking for the real, real changers, the real game changers, the guy who actually makes a team better, in like exponentially better. This team is right now like, poised to be the third seed without their all-NBA power forward Julius Randle missing about 40 games or so now. I, I can't lost count, but he's missed about over half the season. And he's gone for the rest of the season, uh, sadly. Uh, and I'll have something to talk about that because there's an interesting de development that uh, or dynamic that could be developing uh, depending on how far the Knicks go this year without Julius Randle. So it's going to be interesting how that works out. Uh, but this guy had all the moves. He was making Kobe White insane. <laughs> uh, Kobe White even called him a motherfucker in, in the postgame uh, interview. But, in, you know. In, in the good in the good way uh and i even know the play that happened there was a play where kobe was all over him and jalen just did a little side step side back step <laughs> suck it right i sunk a three-pointer right over kobe and kobe was just shaking his head like there was nothing he could do and kobe's got some good size i think kobe's like at least six five maybe six six he has some good size and kobe's a good player i really liked him a lot i, I wanted the knicks to look at him as uh, a case we ever lost iq he might have been a great uh, replacement. Uh, I liked him. I, I'm glad. He, I'm happy for him that he's finally uh, bloomed into the player that uh, I thought he could be. I thought he could be. He actually, actually, last night he didn't. I mean, well, he ended up with 24 points himself, but he needed 22 shots to do it. Uh, two of eight from the three-point line, not so great for him. But he did pick up six assists. Uh, the New York Knicks, talk about assists. The New York Knicks had 31 assists. Fantastic. Seven for Josh Hart, six for Isaiah Hartenstein, six for DiVincenzo, and eight for Brunson. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. I do have highlights for you. I'm going to run through this part, and then we'll get to the highlights. Uh, NBA University tweeted this out. Knicks are 17-3 and three in games where OG Ananobi plays, a plus 23.2 per 100 possessions in nearly 1,400 possessions. Excuse me, with him in the, on the court. It's on, in the court. On the court. This team can safely have serious hopes for a deep playoff run in the Eastern Conference. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I don't... Who's going to beat this team in the seven-game series? I mean, the Celtics? Of course. they. Of course. The Celtics are the favorites. They are running away with the East. But other than them, I don't... I mean, I don't see who. 
I do not see who. The Sixers I do worry about a bit. They're on a roll. I had them going 5-1 and one to close the season out, and they're totally following that path. Uh, so that could be that could be interesting. They got Embiid back. Uh, he looks good enough. You know, he's making a tremendous impact on that team. So he they could be a problem for the Knicks. However, you know, we got Mitch back. Even though a lot of people are worried about Mitch right now, I'm hearing it. Uh, they're worried about his conditioning. He doesn't look sharp. His touch. I mean, his touch doesn't look sharp. But defensively, he looks. He just looks a, a, a tad bit slow. However, I still see. I still see the positive impact that he puts he, he makes on while he's on the court. Uh, I know last night uh, he no points in his uh, about 20 minutes of play. Uh, he did pick up two steals, but only one rebound for Mitch. So that I can see why it is concerning. However, this is why it's great that he came back to play at least what the last 11, 12 games of the season. This it's going to take him some time to get that conditioning. You know, when you have ankle surgery, there's really not much you can do. You know, while you're rehabbing and getting back into shape, you lose your conditioning. There's no doubt. He's never going. He was not going to be as sharp as he was with pre-injury. It's going to take him a while. The good thing is, there's another three games left, and there's about a week in between. Uh, I know game conditions are much. You know, uh, practice conditions can't emulate game conditions, but I think Fibs will probably have at least one or two pretty intense scrimmages during that week to keep the Knicks sharp, and that'll help Mitch. And hopefully, by you know. Hopefully by the end of the first round, which I do predict we're going to win that, we're going to win that. Hopefully by the end of that first round, he'll start looking a lot sharper because he's going to need to be for that second round run. Here we go. Here are the conference standings right now for the East. Uh, Milwaukee is 48-31. and 31. They play three more games. Two of them are against Orlando, who is now in fourth behind us there. So here's the best case scenario for the Knicks. The Knicks run the table they go three and0 for the remaining three games that means they play the Celtics tomorrow and uh they play uh forgot who they play on they play the Celtics tomorrow I forgot who they play on Friday but they close with uh they close with the Bulls again at home wait let me check this because I definitely want to be on point here for this uh anyway they play somebody on on Friday my brain is blanking right now but if the Knicks can run that table, then Orlando and Milwaukee split their two games that they play against each other, and they both lose the other game in between. So Milwaukee, I think, plays OKC, and Orlando, I think, plays Boston, actually. So I, it's very possible. The Knicks could end up with the second seed. <laughs> that, I mean, that's it's in their hands it's in their hands of course they need milwaukee to lose so that's the one thing but in terms of being able to hold on to their third seat that is totally within their hands they went out three they go three and oh they finished with 50 wins fantastic let's go all right and this dropped uh, today uh, i'm gonna pick it up i'm gonna put it back here uh, it's probably gonna replace that cover it's probably gonna replace that cover the slam cover with the nova boys uh can't knock the hustle unbelievable the impact that they have had well Brunson to to begin the whole process and then bringing in Josh Hart and then signing Dante DiVincenzo has turned these Knicks into a bona fide contender right now do they still have, need some pieces of course they do but with a guy like Brunson I'm telling you there really isn't a ceiling right now this guy is coming in and giving you 40 plus points night in night out unbelievable all right, here are the stats, but let's get to the highlights. Here we go. Uh, the New York Knicks got off to uh, an interesting start. Uh, they were up uh, 36 to 27 in that first quarter. Uh, it was probably their best quarter, honestly. OG, once again, gets the first bucket. Uh, he looked good. There was one time where he, uh, faked, out, he faked out DeRozan uh, by the three-point line. And uh, <laughs> DeRozan kind of landed on him awkwardly, and I saw OG's elbow hit the floor, and I was, like, panicked for, like, a half second, but didn't bother him at all. He got up, so that's a great sign, guys. And today, there's no news that he has any uh, swelling or inflammation or he's not uh, listed as uh, questionable or anything at all in the injury report. So it's a good sign. 
we may have gotten past the worst part of the OG Ananobi elbow recovery. He right now it could be hopefully it could be smooth sailing from now on. And he had a fantastic game where he you know made all four of his buckets in that first quarter. His defense is always all, all defensive. Uh, I mean, has all defensive NBA guy. He's ten of eighteen uh, overall. Picked up three rebounds, one assist, got a block. Uh, did commit two turnovers, but you know nothing to freak out about. Uh, oh, nice. The ball movement was nice and crisp, uh, evidenced by the 31 assists that the Knicks picked up. The Knicks uh, did only get 31 rebounds. So once again, they were out-rebounded. It's starting to happen lately. Uh, the Bulls picked up 39 rebounds. The Knicks only had 31. But the Knicks overall shot 55.4%, and the Bulls shot 53.4%. So there, weren't, there were less rebounds available in general. Now, still, we shouldn't get out-rebounded, but you can see that those rebounding numbers are not high. You know, those are very low rebounding numbers. Even from the three-point line, the Bulls, who are not a great three-point shooting team, you know, at least they managed to hit 10 of 28. The Knicks were sizzling, sizzling. They shot 17 of 36 from the three-point line, 47.2%. Brunson, 7 of 12. Uh, Ananobi, 4 of 6. Dante DiVincenzo, 3 of 9. Beautiful. I mean, uh, Miles did struggle again. Uh, Deuce, I have a feeling, uh, you know, he's been taken out of the uh, starting rotation. So the first game he was taken out, he, he did pretty well. Uh, I think, you know, the minutes. I think he, he had logged the most minutes of anybody in the last two and a half to three weeks. Uh, anybody in the NBA. He had log, logged the most minutes. I think that might have caught up a little bit uh, on, on him, and uh, he's not as sharp. And also, guys are not taking it for granted. They know that if he's open, he can knock down that three-point shot. They're closing out on him a little harder. They're not letting him get those clean looks. This was a crazy end to that first uh, half. So, Brunson, well, uh, Vooch, Vooch, oh, what was that? Vooch uh, hit a three-pointer, which sucks. And then Brunson, in, with only like, with like, a half second left on a shot clock. He hit a three-pointer. Brunson inbounds the pass a little too quickly. Got stolen. You just saw the highlight. Got stolen. And uh, I think Kobe uh, White hits that three. But then <laughs> Dante hits almost a half-court bank shot. Beautiful to nullify that mistake. And that was a sign, a good sign of things to come. And as you can see, the Knicks, uh, they did, you know, they took control of that third quarter because it looked like, you know what, at some point it could get away from them. But look here, they built up a lead. They were up 14 points at one time. And then the Bulls started coming back. They made some adjustments after that timeout. And they ended up tying that quarter. It was 33 all for both teams in that quarter. Oh, it's Brunson. Look at that. Look at this move. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Not only is he crafty, but he also <laughs> has the ability to find that little pocket where like he can he can just wreck havoc on on a uh, on a defense oh nice play there see the back there i love how they were looking for each other tonight beautiful look at that look at this hustle look at josh hart just taking that rebound away best best rebounder in the nba six feet four and under it's not even close. He's definitely the best rebounder. Uh, the Knicks did a nice job in terms of uh, creating opportunities here. They got, uh, well, they only turned the ball over 10 times. So that's nice. But the Bulls only, only turned it over nine times. Interesting. I thought it was, uh, I thought there were more turnovers there for the Bulls. Well done for them. Bulls picked up 12 offensive rebounds to Knicks only six. Rarely do the Knicks get uh out rebounded on the offensive glass. The Knicks uh, were very, very proficient from the free throw line, hit 19 of 20, 95% from there. The Knicks were a 50, 40, 90 team. Those are elite numbers. When a player can achieve 50% from the field, 40% from the three point line, and 90% from the free throw line, that is an elite shooting player. Knicks did it last night as a team. Now, one of the things that are concerning, look at the final score, 128 to 117. Knicks gave up 117 points to a Chicago Bulls team without Zach Levine. And uh, Drummond uh, got hurt and he left the game with four and a half minutes left. Not that he's a big scoring force himself, but 
when you look at that, it make it's a little concerning that uh, you know we could give up that many points to this team. But you know what? Teams after when they start playing against each other often, they start finding those weaknesses and they get into grooves against each other. Uh, and it can also go the other way. It can also go the other way. Uh, last night it went uh, this way, where both teams were hitting their buckets. Look at that beautiful cut. I love the way they're looking for each other cutting. OG has just become a tremendous. Not only is he like probably the best defender that I've ever seen, he's also become a tremendous offensive weapon. All right, here we go. So I rattled off a lot of these stats already. As you guys can see, uh, like the 31 rebounds and 31 assists. <laughs> Rarely do we ever see those two numbers equaling each other. Uh, the plus minus. OG plus 12 and Josh Hart a plus 17. He got 17 points, 13 rebounds, just three assists shy of another triple double for him. He had seven assists. Uh, let's see here. Bogdanovich, uh, interesting. Let's see how many, how many Bogdanovich played uh, only nine minutes, one of four. Now, look at this. Fibs went to an eight man rotation last night. So, no Precious and no Alec Burks. And it's interesting, after he closed, I forgot which, I think it was the Chicago game, where he closed, he played Achua the entire fourth quarter. And now he comes back and Achua doesn't play at all. This is showing how Thibs is trying different things and looking for the players who are going to respond for him in a playoff-type atmosphere or a playoff-type rotation. A lot of teams cut their rotations down, at least by one player, maybe two sometimes. So here we got an eight-man rotation. Do I think it's going to stay like that? Uh, probably not. He's, I, th I could see uh, Thibs experimenting in the final three games a little more to see if Precious can give us something, is to see if Burks can reawaken. Uh, but I have a feel. I have a better. I have more confidence that Precious could crack that rotation again than Burks. It might be the end for Burks in terms of him being part of the rotation, unless there's foul trouble or there's some situational reason to bring him in so this might be what we saw uh last night might be the actual playoff rotation plus some time for pressures of chua depending on foul trouble for everybody else uh the chicago bulls you can see uh damar was the leading scorer 34 points they had three guys with 20 points or more and damar with 30 uh they had some scoring 117 points we gave up uh if caruso you know hits a few more buckets uh if javante green does anything what he did last time against the knicks where he lit us up uh but not he wasn't that same player today and uh let's see terry didn't even attempt a three-pointer uh javon carter was one of five and his six minutes not good here are the team comparisons uh let's see in points in the paint we lost that we were minus 12. Wow. But we were a plus six in the fast break points, 14 to eight. Nice. And of course, our three point shooting was just unbelievable. We hit seven more three pointers than Chicago. That's an additional 21 points. That is outstanding. The largest lead the Knicks had was 17. The Bulls, only two. Oh, ooh. all right. Well, one thing I wanted to talk about is the interesting dynamic that could develop. If this Knicks team that's looking phenomenal, if they are able to run the table, meaning we have to beat uh, the Celtics, that's for sure, we have to beat the Celtics. And then let me look up the team we're playing on Friday. The team we're playing on Friday is, oh, the Nets. <laughs> the Nets at home. We should be able to take care of that. So we beat the Celtics. We have a great chance of running the table. And then that means that this team will have won 50 games in a season where they played more than half the season without – Julius Randle, and if the Knicks go and get past the first round like they did last year and get into the second round, so then equal the performance, the playoff performance that they did last year, think about this. We're going to be doing it without Randle. So this is a tricky situation here because does that mean that this, this current team doesn't necessarily need a Randle to repeat what it did last season? Remember, he's not a great playoff player, hasn't proven to be. This was going to be the season where he was going to show the world that he can uh, contribute significantly in a playoff atmosphere. So he's not going to get that chance. The reason I'm saying all this is if during the summer a big trade does develop, I think the Knicks could have some confidence in being able to in in, in confidence in 
moving Julius Randle as part of a big package. Let's say something happens with Embiid. He wants to come to New York. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns. I'm just throwing names out there. I don't know anything specific. But let's say we hear something. It's going to be interesting. It's going to make the Knicks' confidence to be able to trade him and still continue to prosper much higher. Something to look forward to. Uh, not look forward, but to look out for in terms of the dynamic as it moves forward into the future here. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, again, uh, my apologies for the late uh, re oh. <laughs> the late recap. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to tease the end there. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about this team. Uh, the <laughs> the type of response that this team keeps coming up with, night in, night out. I mean, it just, it, it, I, I feel like a little kid again, you know, watching those uh, 70s Knicks teams. And then, you know, later on in, uh, in my 20s, watching uh, the Patrick Ewing teams. This, I feel like every night this team has a chance to win. And that is a great feeling. As a Knicks fan, I haven't had that feeling in a very long time. Even though during this stretch, the Thibodeau era, we've done very well. It was still a lot of frustration. Right now, that frustration level is almost zero. That's what I mean. Even though when we were winning that those the, in the past couple of seasons, there were still some frustrations here and there. It still seemed like there was more we could do. Well, I don't feel like that now. I feel like this team has fully become the best version of itself, and it's only going to keep getting better with continuity and chemistry and more floor time for these guys together. Wow. I am hyped, hyped, hyped. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, again, my name is George. I will definitely be doing recaps for the final three games, and I will see you around the next turn.